It's the internet, you're busy, let's do this. Welcome to the Games Beat Decides podcast. This is the podcast where we decide everything about the world of games so you don't have to think for yourself. I'm your host, Jeffrey Grubb, and with me is... Mike Minotti. Woo! We got, um, we're, we're recording this on Thursday, it'll be up on Friday. Uh, we're going to talk about some Crash Bandicoot, because Mike got the, got the chance to play that. That's pretty exciting. Uh, but, you know, big stuff this week was, uh, of course, the nin- the Nintendo Direct Mini, Mike! Woo! Yeah! <laughs> oh my Fun. god, that was this week. That was this week. Oh my god, that thing, wow. That was this week. So we're going to talk about that. Of course, we're going to talk about the Xbox uh, Games Showcase. That's going to be the bulk of the episode. Uh, there might have been some other stuff that happened this week, but I don't really remember anymore. Um because, like Mike said, oh my god, the Nintendo Direct Mini was also this week. Uh, in today's episode, so we'll have some news, we'll have some games. First, though, I want to thank you for joining us. You can get more from me and Mike at GamesBeat.com. If you have something to share with us, you can email us at games plus podcast adventurebeat.com. That's the plus sign. Thank you to Carlos Ayn, who is Insane in the Rain Music on YouTube for the use of our theme song. And if you are listening to this on the player widget on the website, or if you're watching on YouTube, you could subscribe to the audio version of the show on, on Google Podcast, Apple Podcast, Stitcher, Spotify, anywhere where pods are caught. Uh, finally, uh, if you like us, rate us. It helps people find the show. You can use whatever app you're listening to uh, to rate us. They, most of them have that now. All right, uh, so I got a rundown here, Mike, of the Xbox uh, showcase. Should we just start with that, or should we get some of these other things off here, like the Nintendo Direct anyway, Mini? Let's talk, let's talk about <laughs> Mini. Uh, that's tempting. Let's talk about Xbox first. Okay, yeah, so this, this pretty much just happened when we are recording, um, you know, like a few hours ago it finished up. Um, I guess let's just do the overall big take here. What, was, like, what were your thoughts? I thought it was fine. I don't yeah. think I was blown away by anything. Uh, I I think that it, you know it was a pretty good showing of exclusives, which was a problem for them before. So they definitely have improved there. I think you know there's a good amount of variety. Like it wasn't just shooters, wasn't just map games. There's still plenty of those things. Yes, but there was like there were cool things like that that Yuji Naka's new game, uh, which I guess was technically a, a kind of a pre-show thing, but you know, uh, or even just like small things like Ori, uh, Vowed, uh, were, were were pretty cool. Um. I, you know, I I don't think it was as good as Sony's show. I don't think more than anything. I think it was missing a that Ratchet and Clank moment, like yeah. something where I was like, oh, this is like this is kind of a next gen thing, and I, and I guess that's kind of. I mean that that was already kind of a complaint with PlayStation Five. It's just something with this this generation cycle, we're we're gonna have anyways, and Microsoft's already leaning into that, right? Like the whole you know, the generation doesn't really matter. And right. That's why it kind of because of that, this almost feels just like another like microsoft e3 right like oh here's just the next games that microsoft are working on like the fact that these are coming to xbox series x almost seems not important or in in the emphasis you know emphasize. So, so since this has all happened so there's been some talk about how um microsoft has already broken that promise because there was a bunch of games that aren't listed as coming to xbox one um, and those are the ones you might really? expect avowed, uh, fable, things like those games that are, um, beyond probably coming out beyond that two year, uh, threshold that Microsoft right. was talking about where in the first two years, everything's going to come to both. And I think that that means probably, probably by like fall 2022, uh, any game coming out at that point, that's like a f- first party game probably is not going to come to Xbox one S anymore, unless it, you know, unless it's a smaller game. Um, but the, the one that was most notable is Forza Motorsport, which probably is coming out before that, uh, and maybe it's probably just mislabeled. It's probably also coming to Xbox One, but maybe maybe not. I don't know. Um, I guess, to, to like, knowing that the big games that did stand out, or, you know, the big announcements, at least, because we didn't see a ton of gameplay from all those things, the fact that those are coming probably just to Xbox Series X and will take advantage of that stuff, does that help at all with what you're saying? I guess, well, that... I, I, the problem is like then I really want to see more of those games and what they look like. like right. Part of the problem here is that the big gameplay th- showcase for Series X was Halo Infinite, right? Mm-hmm. And Halo Infinite like looks good. We can, we can get into this whole thing with the screenshot now, but like you know, is that really pushing me? Like, oh wow, yeah, this is what like the next evolution of what a Halo game could look like could be. And it's like, no, not really. But I mean, Halo has a history of that anyways i remember halo 3 people were complaining that like it didn't look good enough and stuff like that like like halo i suppose we, we always expect halo to be a graphical showcase just because it's so big and such a prestigious like franchise mm-hmm. even though it hasn't really been that since like 
Halo 2. I, I think maybe like I think Halo people thought Halo 4 looked good at like they were impressed at how good it looked for a late Xbox 360 game, but right. Yeah, right. But it's been a while where like, you know, a Halo game was like one of the best looking games. And plus Halo is just so it's kind of artistically confused between like being kind of cartoony, but not like it's it's not Overwatch. It's it's not Call of Duty. It, it's somewhere in between there graphically. And sometimes that it kind of comes across as looking a little off putting, especially like that's what looks weird in screenshots. Like there's right. that screenshot with like the grunt or whatever. And he like just he looks like he's cosplaying as Mega Man. <laughs> and, like, he looks like a kind of like weird alien man with like not great textures wearing like cartoon armor and it yep. seems totally bizarre in that screenshot but it, like in action it's like that, that's fine that's fine i mean I, I said this before the big thing i really want from the next generation is let's just get steady good frame rates finally happening and like that's like my big takeaway from halo and i'm like yeah look how smoothly this is running now of course trailers are always going to be like that but like you know my thinking here is like this has to at least run at 60 frames per second. So they said so. They, they, right. they, they made a big point to emphasize that. And it's like, that's, right. um, so yeah, that's, that's great. That, that I think, um, but I think you're right. Like that, that the fact is right now, the game that they have for launch and which is the point, point in time that we're at is the lead up to launch. And the game they have for that is, is Halo Infinite. Um, a lot of the other stuff they showed is, is a ways off. So uh, I think a lot of the, um, I think the, the the reason the show might feel like it came up short, I think, is a lot of is it just comes down to those factors. Is we're not sure if Avowed's going to be good. I, I I'm a, I'm excited about the idea of Avowed, uh, but it's not like um, when you say we're remaking Final Fantasy VII, where it's like uh, people have like a huge attachment to this thing, and they're and it's something they've always asked for, and you're delivering exactly what they want, and and you're promising the biggest budget in the world and all this stuff. Uh, that's the kind of thing where it's like people go really wild for in these showcases. But it doesn't mean that these games uh, won't eventually deliver or be great. It's just it's just hard to get as excited for them now when we're so far away from them, and and, and we just don't know. Other things that kind of just compare unfavorably to Sony's show, just more CG trailers in general, like State yeah. of Decay 3. Um, it, closing with Fable, I think that's cool in that it's a surprise, but compared to, like, Sony closed with Horizon 2, and maybe, you, I know you don't like Horizon, and, and that's understandable. I, just, I, I don't think game. it's a bad game, I just, I just don't, I bounce right. off. But, like, they had a good amount of that to show, right? Like, Fable was literally just, like, uh, you know, like a, what, 20 second long CG trailer stealing right. a joke from Shrek 4D from the Universal theme parks I might <laughs> But uh <laughs> so only from the best. I mean great artists mimicking. steal, man. Great artists I don't want to say I don't want to say stealing. I don't I, I don't want Frank Oz yelling at me. But, <laughs> <laughs> that's a long story. Um, yeah. Right. So so yeah, I, I so just like kind of in those in those categories, right? Like like Sony also is showing some games that are obviously not coming out this year, but it seemed like they generally had like more to show. I'll, I don't I'll think they had a ton more games. gameplay, but I think they, the gameplay they had really uh, went a long right. way. Ratchet well, and Clank you know, and, and Horizon Ratchet went a long way. Uh, yeah, I think that did, yeah. And, and, like, there wasn't a ton of gameplay outside of that, I don't think. Um, there may, may have been, but, like, that, that, it didn't matter. Like, people were happy with those, and then all the rest were announcements. And it's like, if you had... Um, if you had all the same announcements in this Xbox show, exactly the same as, as what really happened, and then you had like something that was another good gameplay thing to close the show with, uh, equivalent to Halo, I think people probably start feeling a little bit better. Um, but but it's, I, you know, I don't think it's like necessarily like most people are, are completely disappointed with the show. I just think people might have had really high expectations, and it definitely didn't meet those. Yeah, I don't think I don't think anybody's like mad, right? right. Like it, like oh yeah, it, it obviously was fine. Um, now you know but i guess again expectations because it's you know the the new console show can sometimes get i don't want to say they they became unreasonable maybe expectations should be high i, I don't know right it's hard but, to say right but, but I, it's like you know but even something's like like couldn't we have learned a little bit more about like whatever wild actually is yeah because you know, i still don't really under, understand what, what's happening there uh you know even hellblade 2 right like that's a game we've, we've seen before they did not have very much to show of that which seems kind of strange like I think I these games are just far off i think i think these yeah. games are a ways off i mean i, I honestly uh, you know we got the i have the list here in front of us um i think of the big games like avowed like state of decay 3 which which they had a cg trailer for that looked cool but we'll see what the, the end game like ends up looking like um you know everwild uh forza motorsport um uh, the, the, the fable 
things like that. Like we're, I, a lot of these things are uncertain for even 2021. It seems like now Forza again, I think does come out in 2021, but if they're saying it's only on Xbox series X and that's real, then, then it's probably not. Uh, and that's, you know, so we're on like, if this show was, uh, if you came into the show and you were like, this is the thing that's going to get me excited about spending that $500, $600 to get an Xbox series X. I'm, I'm not sure that it succeeded at that. I think it's, um, I think it is making a lot of promises, but there are a lot of promises that that can be kept, and then you just pick up a system later down, later on down the road. You don't have to get it this holiday. And then on the other end, I think that if this show was trying to convince you to like Game Pass is a good deal, I think it's much better. I think it succeeded much more at that. And that, if that was their say, goal, like, then they did fine. Right. Like it almost seems like more, this is more of a pitch for Game Pass than for Series X. And maybe, and it, maybe was. it was. Maybe that was the point. Yeah, right. right. Exactly. Like, uh, like you know. But I mean. You know, I say that I'm like they got they have to want to be more concerned than that about selling the new system. I think maybe uh, it's it's hard to see. It's hard to tell. I, I do think they're caught in the middle though, right? Like they clearly um they are selling the system, right? They are selling. It. They made yeah, it. Like they it's always, right. You, right. If you're so, making it. You want to sell it. So like, but and and then try to like to approach this as like Game Pass is the only thing that matters. Like maybe it is. Uh, it, like, but then uh, on the other hand, and why are you still doing the console then? Um, I, I don't know. It, it's, I think they were kind of always, always in a tough position. I think like a lot of these developers, while, uh, you know, we've, we've been talking about them for years. A lot of them, they did acquire in like, you know, the last two, three years, a lot of them had pre like previous engagements, a lot previous contracts that they had to finish up games, uh, that, that they are still putting out on, on multiple platforms. Uh, so I think a lot of this stuff was always going to take quite some time. Um, and I just think that they're, they're feeling, they're, they're feeling the burn of that at, at like right now in this moment. I, I don't necessarily know it's going to be like a long-term problem. I still think that, uh, I think the show was good enough that if we go into August and prices, get announced and, and Microsoft is able to match. And then we go to launch and people start like doing comparisons and like, well, the, the games do run better on Xbox series X. I, I think a lot of people are going to be like, well, it's the same price. Maybe I should just get that one. Um, you know, it, the, the, these are people that not, are, maybe aren't necessarily in love with first party Sony. There are a lot of people who are, and they're of course just going to get a PS five and I don't blame them. Uh, and, I, and I think that if you're talking about whether or not this show is going to win over any of those people, there's no, no way that happened. There's just no way. Right. Right. Um, I, I don't know. I, I guess, uh, looking at the list, are there any games that like really stuck out to you or anything that you are very excited about? Or even if you're like uh, imagining what they could be. I'm, I'm excited to play Ori again. Yeah, I know. That's, that was I, cool that they announced that's going to get a, it's so the big announcement there was, it's getting updated to like highest fidelity, highest 4k at 120 frames per second. Is that what it was? Yeah. 120. Yeah. 120 frames per second, 4k. And, uh, I mean, plus, like, that was the only time, and I'm also a little surprised there wasn't more of it, that, like, they're like, here's what it looks like now, here's what it will look like mm -hmm. on Series X. Like, that was the one time they, like, went there, and, like, seeing that, I was like, oh, yeah, that's cool. Like, that's, look, that's an improvement. I can understand that. I, and so, I think that's uh, something they're going to do more going forward. I bet they're yeah. just, they're probably just not quite ready for that yet. It's probably a bit, mm -hmm. a bit soon, even for, uh... Like, I mean, Halo looks like it's still being finished up. It looks like it's still being polished. And I bet well, that game... They st... Go ahead. They said that, like, it's going to get its ray tracing patch after it comes out. Is right, exactly. True? Yes, that's yes, weird. they did. So, right, that's that's weird. And, uh, you know, I think that's people who are like, well, then why do I need the Xbox Series X? I think you, that's a fair way to feel about all this. Um, I uh, It's probably still going to run better on that. And, you know, ray tracing is not the the only thing that's going to be the benefit of a next gen system. But when we're talking about visuals, there's just not much of a jump between one generation to the next. Um, I think that's why ratchet and clink was so important for PlayStation five, because it showed like the other things that are happening with visuals that look pretty kind of in line with the last ratchet and clank game. Uh, you know, they are better, but, but the things that you're, they're doing and the speed with which they're loading in assets, uh, that is, that is impressive. And that's what the big difference is going to be, especially for uh, how developers feel about making games today, where I think a lot of de developers get up to that, uh, wall of making a game and they see like, Oh, we're dealing with all these loading times and there's a really hard wall there. And we could do a lot more if we could push past that. And they're going to have the chance to push past that push, push past that really quickly on next gen. Uh, and, and that's going to be where we're going to see the difference. And then eventually down the line, I think we'll see games take advantage of the, of the CPU, but just where we're at today a lot of that stuff is is it's hard to convey because the games aren't doing that yet and and i think that's going to be true on both systems for quite some for quite some time but it, it might be 
more true on Xbox uh, for a variety of reasons, supporting the old hardware, but also just the developers aren't ready. And yeah, that, that, that's where we're at. Um, I, you know, for me, I, I, like I said, avowed, I really actually, I really like the idea of another developer making a Skyrim like game. Yeah. Um, especially Obsidian makes sense. Yeah, Obsidian. Yeah, exactly. Uh, making just an RPG like that. That's the kind of, that's the kind of game that I can like think about playing for, for, for a long time. And like, um, and I, you know, uh, I, I I bounce off of stuff like Horizon, and I don't think I'm gonna love Halo Infinite. I just haven't loved a Halo game, really ever. Uh, but uh, but 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 you know, they're, you. yeah, they're fine. But I've just never it's never I been my yeah. Halo. I don't hate Halo. It's just not for me. Uh, but a game like Skyrim from uh, you know a, a Skyrim like game from Obsidian. Now that's something I can imagine myself getting very excited about and loving and playing. Uh, so. So yeah, and that's kind of all you could do at this point because it was just a, a teaser. And then you know, Fable does. Uh, you know, it seems like they're going for that Fable tone. That trailer that you know you talked about them stealing the Shrek yeah. joke. Uh, they're still going for that like British humor, which I'm like uh, a bit surprised about. But I guess if you're going to make a Fable, you kind of have to do that stuff. But I'm just I have such a high faith in um, playground games that I'm like I just you know go for it, do what you're going to do. I bet it's going to be pretty good. Like the reason I'm ex- I am kind of excited for fable is because it's a new developer right oh yes like i'm like oh thank god peter mon is not involved in this. yeah i mean you know fable you know everyone knows that there was one good fable game <laughs> really there's fable 2 like fable 1 was fine it had it had a lot of issues fable 3 was just not good I, and then there was fable on rails and uh no it was wasn't one... <laughs> sign the wall man yeah then i forget that then there was the one that didn't actually come out right yeah, like that sounds right. I, you know, I just yeah. it's another franchise I never really paid attention to because I, ne- I just never got into it. Uh, but right. like, I'm so into like Playgrounds, Forza Horizon games, and I could see the talent of that developer. I'm like, yeah, just throw that throw that name at them, let them do what they're gonna do. I bet it's gonna be pretty good. So I'm excited right. about that. And I guess stuff. that's why, like, I was that's why, like, I'm disappointed to not like I see right. a little bit more of that just because I'm so curious. Like, of course, yeah, I'm not mad about it, but like. You know, like, what does that look like? Like, a, a, you know, it's been so long since we've had a proper fable. It, like, you kind of get a sense that they're going more, like, in the kind of more pure fantasy, whereas, like, Fable 2 uh, and then Fable 3 and further kind of went more, a bit more industrial. Mm-hmm. So, like, you got that sense of it. And again, like, I, the, you know, I was wondering about that tone. Like, are they going to take it more, quote unquote, seriously? And no, they aren't, which I think is probably what people are hoping for. So, like, we learned something, but uh, yeah, still a lot of questions. Right. And I think that's just going to be kind of be the the case with with Xbox until we kind of uh, until we go forward because it's going to be well, we're going to get Halo at launch and I, I'm sure they'll have a few other games here or there but I think if they had another big launch game they would have said it I think the same thing with Sony obviously um, I, I just think that even in 2021 maybe maybe Sony's uh, lineup is looking more formed than Microsoft is at, at this point it's mm-hmm. um, like it's easy to look forward to Ratchet and Clank. And and then, it, but in twenty twenty one, probably I guess they didn't. I don't know if they gave that a date at all or like a year. I even. I don't. I forget. I think. I they showed game was a decent. So. Yeah, they showed that pre year. Yeah, so that I mean, yeah, for twenty twenty, like in terms of the launch, because it looks like basically you got Halo Infinite as a, like the only one of these things that's actually a launch title, and then on the uh, PlayStation side, it was like Miles Morales is the only one that's probably actually a launch title, and in in that fight, I think Halo wins just because. Yeah, you know, sure. Miles Morales is gonna be right. fun, but again, that's not like a. That's not a. I don't want to say it's not a real sequel, but it kind of isn't, right? Like they're very clear. It's it, like yeah. a lost legacy. Whatever you know what call it those is. things yeah. now, it's a standalone expansion sort of thing. Right. Like, it'll be cool, but like that's not going to compare to the you know sixth Halo game. Right, and that, that, that's just based on the um the the, the track record of, of the previous standalone expansion games from Sony, which many are very good uh, but but they get they, they come and they go because of the, their scale and stuff like that um you know that's not to say the game won't sell really well i bet it does sell really well just because spider-man is sure. so popular and that game uh mm-hmm. did very well but I, you know i think in the, when you start ta- when you start talking about like later this year i think a lot of the, the, the like the, the launch games for these new systems are just going to get lost in the shuffle for stuff like cyberpunk like that's going to be the game people talk about right. and, i mean uh, and that's right, what's like going to matter launch games it's going right. to be like assassin's creed valhalla right yeah like that, right yeah and then we're so then then really we we, we are talking about like uh 2021 i, I suppose that we're ta- we're you know the the launch lineup uh is one thing the the lineup of 2021 is another i guess i, I, I 
I go to that because we don't know the price and and we, and because we don't know like what the um the services or the changes in services are going to be. Like I I've heard that they're getting rid of Xbox Live Gold as a paywall for for multiplayer subscriptions on on Xbox. They didn't talk about that today. I've heard that they're going to make the multiplayer for for Halo free. Uh, and it's like th- these are things that are like could be a big deal and could carry the the system forward into 2021 in a, in a really um you know in a momentous way but at the same time i still want i still want to see like big games coming out in 2021 uh coming to game pass whatever uh that would give me a reason to get excited about an xbox series x I, and 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 they haven't really done that yet it does feel like we are a ways off from a lot of those games yeah i mean even compared to last generation right like people you know they kind of make fun of rise now but you saw rise like you're like oh that looks significantly yes. better than anything i saw on xbox 360 right Agreed. Like, like you almost kind of wish there was like a rise <laughs> like I do. something that like was almost just basically a, a hardware showcase of a game yeah i agree i think that would be that would go down really well right now just like actually make the game that takes advantage of all this stuff let's see it it doesn't have to be like a rise is fine i, I would go back and play rise <laughs> i actually ended up liking it kind of like when i go back and think about it um make something of that level though i agree and and that would be that would go a long way towards making these systems feel more worth it this holiday but yeah that doesn't seem like that's happening on either side we'll see they still have a lot to convey they still have a, a lot of uh, a lot to talk about um i guess let, let, let's let's have that conversation now i was going to save it for the end of this section but let's just talk about it now what's um what do you want to see next between now and the launch of these systems Man, that's interesting. I mean, aside the obvious one is price, right? Because that seems to be the right. most important thing at this point. Who's coming in cheaper? Uh, like, do you think there's any chance that they it's a dead even? Do you think they're? Do you think they would both just come in at the same price? Or you I think, think for the the high, I think I think the Xbox Series X will match one of the systems definitely. Uh, likely the more expensive one. Uh, I, I think yeah. I think I think they're dead even pretty much. Yeah. All right. So, so that's interesting. I mean. The one we we're hearing more about Microsoft's like going to like take advantage of like back catalog, right? Like it's going to be compatible with all these games. And I'm like, man, of course, like the one of the big three that has like the least interesting back catalog is the one who's more than right. ho about yeah. that. Like, like I would love it if if Sony was like, look, here's like, you know, as part of a PlayStation Now or whatever it's called, like you can you you can play a hundred PlayStation One games, and, you know, hundred PlayStation Two games, and they'll be all right there like you know i, I want to see a bit more on the service side from sony because that's somewhere where they're really lagging behind on microsoft yeah i and i think um that's probably going to be the kind of stuff that they should start talking about soon i, I mean i i think if they had backward compatibility like the, a really robust backward compatibility they probably would have mentioned it by now and so when they um mm-hmm. they keep going this this long without saying anything about it it's probably because it's not working quite how people want um hang on i got my kid let me deal with her real quick I think, yeah, price, we're going to have to hear about price. I think we're going to have to, um, I, I really just want them both to kind of sit down and detail their thoughts on, on their secondary systems. Like, uh, position the, the PlayStation 5 all digital version uh, with, with the price, but also just kind of say, like, well, you know, how do people upgrade their storage and stuff like that? You know, give us a, an actual option to do that. Um actually prove that that stuff about how oh now that we're using ssds game game file sizes can be smaller um to make that system make more sense because you know people are just going to remember call of duty being 200 gigabytes or whatever and if they can come in and say actually no it really is significantly smaller now it's you know even at the biggest it's going to get up to like 75 gigabytes i want to hear that kind of stuff um for for microsoft yeah i think we're definitely going to hear about the the lock cart the xbox series s in august sure. and they'll have to they'll have to explain why this other thing exists and i think um i think that, that communication could be difficult but it also could be like really really crucial to them having a lot of momentum if they really do have this much cheaper system now i don't i don't know how much cheaper it really can be if it's just the gpu that's sort of like like they're not spending as much on the gpu okay that's one thing but it's like the gpu is uh it's expensive it's a, it's a very expensive component but it's not like um the CPU isn't still $150 or whatever uh, alone. So then h- are you really going to be able to get it down to $300? We'll see. Maybe right. they do Like that. how cheaper? $50 cheaper? $100 cheaper? Right. Exactly. 
Um, and, and, you know, I, I think it has to be like for that, if it's less powerful, if it is just a 1080p system, it's going to have to be at least a hundred dollars cheaper, at least. Right. That, again, that almost seems like another advantage for Sony. Cause like they, it's very clear why the one is cheaper than the other one. They're still both PlayStation five right. too. Like, here's the one, this doesn't have a disc drive. That's why this one is cheaper. And then again, I'm still, I'm still. You know, obviously, I don't think Lockhart's the name, but it is still like I want to see what those names are because right now it's like, all right, here's the Xbox Series X. This is kind of a sequel to the Xbox One X, and here's Xbox Lockhart, and it is too, but it's not quite as much of a super sequel as this thing is. Um, right. So I guess I want, yeah, I want to see like I want, kind of want to see the branding on Microsoft's side. Mm. The other thing I want to see from both is just a more concrete idea of what the launch titles are. We, we've kind of touched yes. on that already, but yeah, like. You know, I I know like what the big game is going to probably be for both of them, but I, I want to see if there's more to it than that. I mean, yeah. maybe there aren't. I mean, uh, neither Xbox One or PlayStation Five had like great launch lineups uh, when they came out, and I'm kind of expecting that again. So we'll see. Yeah, and I, I just I, I guess I'm I guess Halo is a, a really big one, and I, so if you go back and compare it yeah. to other systems that didn't have a Halo at launch, right? No, like, that's um, already is like. Much better. better than yeah, uh, Xbox One launching with Rise and uh, uh, what whatever else had had. Sony Probably had some connect Knack. shit, yeah. Yeah, Sony had yeah, Sony had Knack and uh, the 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 last kill zone. I literally mean the last kill zone. <laughs> yeah, no, wait, maybe the Vita One came out after. I can't remember. Anymore. I don't. I that doubt it. Right. That's. I don't know. Yeah. Was, it the, was the Vita before the PlayStation Four? Yeah, remember. right. Because the PlayStation Four came out in uh, 2013, and the Vita and the DS launched in like, or the in the 3DS Vita launched and the 3DS 3DS yeah. launched in like 2011. Yeah. You're, I think that's. I don't right. remember for sure. I think the, I think right. the Vita launched like one year later. The Vita no. launched before because you it was, oh. it's got it had to be the same year that the 3DS came out, I think, and you went to that E3, and that was before I started going to E3s. Yeah, I remember. Okay, maybe that was the same E3 because the, the big thing I remember from my first E3 was a 3DS, but I do know that one the Vita was debuted at one of those early. E3s, right, it was so happening around the same, same time, at least. Yeah. Okay. Um, right. All right then. So yeah, the last <laughs> the literal last uh, Killzone game then. So. Right. What the hell else? I'm gonna look this up while you say something. What the hell yeah. No. Yeah. Go ahead. Yeah. Like, it's like I um, know, like Assassin's Creed Four did, and I mean, it's gonna be the same exact thing with like. Uh, with right, I expect Hollow, the third right? party be to be pretty consistent between f generations. I just um, it, part of me is for some reason thinking that the first party stuff maybe d is a bit slimmer. And I, again, I we've talked about this. I get it on the PlayStation side where they really want to have a, a huge install base before they put their big guns out because their big guns are expensive to make and they want to recoup that cost. And that's easier to do if there are more systems out there. Um, yeah, man, that was like yeah, it was like Xbox Fitness like rise man there wasn't really like any first party no launch games for this thing i said like it was like the other big i don't remember it was like uh it was uh capcom zombie game 3 dead rising 3 remember crimson dragon wow mm, yeah right stuff like battlefield that. 4 lego marvel superheroes oh killer there was that killer instinct was that the launch game? okay this i mean i feel weird. like even that was like i mean it's not great but like i, I and there is no halo so Setting that aside for, for some reason, I don't know why you would set that aside. Oh, but setting that aside, Forza it does feel like... Five was like the big first party, right? Okay, game, so just yeah, I think that maybe that's what it is. Like, there's the Forza is not making launch, so it just makes me feel like, um, that's what that would have been one, like, yeah, that would have been the one. I'm like, well, if there's gonna be one more, maybe the Forza, and then right. not even that. Is this gonna be like the first year without a Forza game in forever? Too, no, so actually, there has there wasn't one in 2019, they had Forza Horizon 4 oh. in 2018. And then t took 2019 off, and now they're taking 2020 off. So uh, taking a break, which th that franchise well, could use a break. That's fine. Right. Well, that's because Playground's been working on Fable now, right? So right. But I think so. there's still a team working on on a Horizon game too. So ah, yeah, well, like that. Never mind. That'll come eventually as well. Um, yeah, I, I don't know. I think. Uh, I, I just think the August stuff, the August state of play. Um, I, I would be surprised if there were like a lot, a lot more game announcements, just straight up. Like here's more stuff on the same level as the last thing. It right. feels like a I time mean, maybe to that's, clarify. Maybe that's where we see halo multiplayer. Yes, exactly. Like you know, the, the August event, Oh, you know, I, I know that they're going to focus on hardware at that, uh, at that event, but I think they should also focus on services and talk about like, if they are getting rid of Xbox live gold, and they are making Halo multiplayer free, th then that would make sense. Talk about it then, explain all of that, explain your whole view on all these things. Um, and, and just make, I guess, 
make sure people feel like they have a reason to pick up an Xbox Series X, even if it's not necessarily your primary goal. Uh, it does seem like a good thing to do if you're Microsoft. Um, yeah, I, I don't think we need to go too much further on, on this. Um, I guess we can move on to the Nintendo Direct Mini. If you're ready, if you're ready for another big conversation, a lot to talk oh about gosh. here. This so you were on hilarious. vacation. You were on, you were on, uh, you were on vacation, and on Sunday night, uh, there were the rumors that it, like they're oh Nintendo's going to announce it here pretty soon. I'm like really at like midnight or whatever, like 10, 10 p.m. on a Sunday, whatever. All right, and they, that's what they did. They said we're going to have a Nintendo Direct Mini partner showcase thing, and they couldn't have. They, they were trying so hard to like set people's expectations as low as possible just with the announcement of this yeah thing. and i think they, they worded it right because as soon as i read that i'm like oh okay this is nothing <laughs> this is not yeah much. right i was like because i was like ready to like come in on monday anyways yeah. even though i was still off that day like i'll come and cover this don't worry then i literally read that i was like i'm not okay i'm not waking up for this no yeah, it sounds like literally nothing i didn't even wake up for it and i was working so i like i was what, <laughs> what i did wake up i went to games beat to like because it was after it happened by a yeah. couple hours. So I went to Games Week to see what he didn't write anything about it. I was like, oh no, it must have been really bad. It's pretty much how it went. Yeah, I, I kind of I woke up a little bit late and I like rolled over and I watched it. And uh, even knowing that it was going to be like 10 minutes and then like seeing the YouTube thing and seeing that it was like eight minutes and 30 seconds, I was still like, man, that was, it's already over. Whoa, that, that, that was a thing. Like it was just so fast. Um, I can't remember all the games that were announced. I didn't write them all down. The big ones were Shin Megami Tensei 3 Nocturne HD and um, mm-hmm. and and then uh, Shin Megami Tensei 5. And uh, I think that's there are a lot of fans of those games. Um, and yeah, that's, just, you know, that's cool. Yeah, it's cool. I think that uh, even among fans of those games, I think that a lot of people still prefer Persona, uh, which is a Shin Megami Tensei spinoff. Um, but, right. I mean, they're, they are so different that some people prefer S- SMT sure, and I know okay. that SMT three is specifically like most people's favorite. So like, you know, that's, that's exciting news for them. Yeah. And it's so long since we heard about SMT five, like that was announced before the switch came out. I think a lot of people are happy just to see, Oh, that game wasn't canceled. Oh, good. Yes. Yeah, exactly. Um, but I mean, there might, I think maybe that um, overcooked thing, the, like the all in one overcooked game, uh, that puts like one and two together in sort of like a collector's edition might have been announced there too. I, I honestly can't remember, but there wasn't there wasn't much basically. I don't think it was there. Yeah, I can't. Yeah, it was, maybe it was, it was maybe that was, was maybe that was something little. else. Um, but right. w- w- whatever. Yeah. The point is, is that Nintendo didn't announce much. They didn't announce any of their first party stuff. Um, and yeah, so I guess that's the conversation here: is what is Nintendo doing? Uh, are you worried? I guess are you worried that they're that maybe maybe they're pushing games off and we're not going to have much for the rest of the year. Yes. Yes. That is exactly what I am worried about. (laughs) I am worried that maybe they like something like COVID messed them up so much that maybe they're just like, aren't any holiday games. I don't know. Like it's because it just seems so bizarre to me that like after Paper Mario launch, we haven't heard much about anything. Like normally you would hear something before that launches about like what's coming out this holiday. And then the fact that they would like do a direct (laughs) And not be like, well, let's, you know, we have other things to talk about. Wow, we're doing this direct, right? We can do a full direct instead of a mini. No, they just had enough for a mini and like not a great mini. So yeah, I'm like, I'm I'm like worried. I'm I'm beginning to feel like are those are those three D Mario remakes or remasters? Is that happening? Is that not making it this year after all? Uh is there anything else coming this year? Like there has to like there's there has to be something. There's five yeah. more months left in the year. Like even as I say it, that's ridiculous. There has to be, but it's just you'd think they would have announced it. Like they should have announced it by now. It's it's bizarre to me. I have no I have no idea what's going on. Like yeah. I understand that they're they've been rattled by COVID. Like, you know, but everybody has, right? And most people aren't like, you know, they haven't been brought down to their knees in the gaming industry. And if it has kind of impacted them that badly, you kind of like wonder about like, you know, the, the structure and the management and like what's going on? I, I don't know. Again, I'm assuming things now. Now, uh, it's it's just weird to me. Then the other weird thing is, I, I don't know, because then, you know, people, there's this backlash. And I saw a lot of, like, you know, our colleagues and friends. I, I, I don't know. I felt like everybody was coming out, like, rushing to defend Nintendo in this kind of weird way. Like, I, I feel like it's fine to criticize Nintendo right now for not having, like, a release date for any games for the next, uh, like, five months and beyond. I, I don't know. What do you think? 
I, I think you're mostly right. I think that um, if people are feeling anxious because they don't know what's coming up, and especially if maybe they just bought a Switch, or, or if like the Switch is like their primary gaming thing, um, I, I guess I, yeah, I don't I don't blame anyone for being like, wait, what what is going on? What do I have to look forward to? Um, I think that like if I were to defend Nintendo, it would it's not a very good defense. It's to say like, oh, they've had worse droughts, they've had worse times to be a Nintendo fan, or like. Or worst time to be like a primarily a primarily Nintendo gamer, uh, but that's just like that's not great. Like you don't right. want to be comparing stuff to like right. the worst times to be a Nintendo fan, right? But like even then, you know, like so much of that was because maybe like the Wii U had a bad year, or but the uh, but the uh, DS or 3DS had a great year. Like I, you know, I kind of thought like part of the benefit of just having one system, the Switch, was like oh we're you know all those games that were spread across two systems are now coming to one, and it's now it's that's why it's even more bizarre that there is any kind of a drought at all right now. Right. Like the idea that we've only had really three major, like first party releases on the switch this year, we've had Xenoblade, Animal Crossing, Animal Crossing is huge. And that counts for a lot. And then Paper right. Mario, uh, it, it seems, it seems weird. And, you know, I guess part of it is because the momentum had been so good for so long and, but like, I, you just would think that there'd be some, you know, they would account for this. There'd be a plan. There's something coming, but I don't know. I, 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 so I think this, this is the plan. Unfortunately, I think the plan is they have stuff probably ready. I think they have Pikmin three deluxe pretty much ready to go. I think that game's been finished. I think they were going to release it earlier this year. And I think the plan is let's hold stuff like that. Uh, especially since we do have paper Mario out, especially since animal crossing is making so much money. Uh, and if any of these games that aren't ready are facing any issues because of COVID, well, we can kind of buffer that off by then releasing P Pikmin 3 Deluxe later and then the Mario games a little bit later than we or originally in intended. But I mean, at the same time, I, I mean, I think it's I think another reason to be worried is that like when Nintendo was finishing up this Nintendo Direct Mini Partner Showcase, they said that they're going to have more Nintendo Direct Mini Partner Showcases coming up soon which suggests maybe not a main direct or primary you know, or general direct coming up anytime in the near future. Uh, and it's just going to be focused on this other stuff. So it's like, are, are they just not going to announce, continue to not, not announce their games for a while? Now, I, I don't necessarily necessarily think that's the case. I do think that at any moment they really could just announce Pikmin 3 Deluxe and drop it at any moment. They could just reveal Mario's 35th birthday party on Twitter or whatever. And then all the games get announced at that time. Um, but but it is you know as it goes further on like if we go through um if we go through August without an announcement then no I think this is weird and or really weird and really bad and really kind of uh, giving me anxiety about like where Nintendo's at I think for now I could I'm like still imagining like they're gonna announce a lot of stuff in August to me that seems right and and if if they if they do that then I'll be like okay this is this is fine well we can all forget about like all our concerns because they did reveal all that stuff that we were hoping for and now we don't have to ever have to like talk about all that uh that fear again um but uh if they, if they do go through august and don't announce stuff then it's like okay they have they are clearly on their heels they don't know what to do or, or about like getting out of their uh their covid funk um and and they're just they're they're so fearful of like uh, how the world works now that they are not going to even release the games that they might have finished like Pikmin, Pikmin Three Deluxe because they just want to keep waiting. Uh, so so we'll see. I still want to like give them a small a small amount of the benefit of the doubt. Um, and and also just because uh, you know this is this is kind of how I've been hearing it go since since March, right? Like um, uh, after those March directs. I heard Nintendo getting real wor worried about COVID and telling partners that they weren't going to do a direct anytime through July and and not until maybe August at the earliest. Um, so the fact that they even did like a mini direct with a partner showcase in July is like actually in that light, maybe a positive, maybe they're like, okay, we can start building up slowly, figuring out how to make these things work, you know, with a lot of people still working from home, especially in the United States. And then, uh, and then we'll put together our own show uh, in August, like we originally planned, but still, it is weird that we got past Paper Mario without any new games to to like look forward to. That is weird, uh, and and the reason I just wouldn't personally be too concerned yet is because I'm playing so many more games on a Nintendo system than I ever have in the past. So much indie stuff, if like if like Hollow Knight 
two comes yeah. out like that's gonna be great uh so, so it's like there's more to play than ever uh but still i get that people want those nintendo games and that's what we're here for so uh, i understand yeah it's just a little weird and yeah more than anything i am sure that it, it's just coming down to them being careful because whatever those fall games are mario or what have you like maybe you know that they are a little scared about me- meeting whatever date they had in mind now uh-huh. Yeah, and just there could be another number of reasons for it. it. Could be as simple as, as like certification, just like really hard to get the kind of people that do certification into an office to play a game in a secure environment, and you know they can only do one game at a, at a time. Maybe that, maybe it's something like that. So uh, that means they could be working on the next game now that Paper Mario's out, and so soon we'll get that next one, and then one more after that. Th- that would be a trickle, and that would be disappointing in in its own way. Uh, but uh, at least then I mean, it's that, just like. Yeah, go ahead. Like what, like what, what, like you know, just like I mean, you know, where's like the Mario Golf game for Switch? Like just sure. something like that, you know? It's like some of these things that should be easy-ish, you know. Like and, and again, even if like the 3D Mario remakes aren't ready, can't imagine that like Super Mario 3D Land for the Switch like should should not like that should be something coming out this year. Right. Agreed. I agree. Um, hopefully we'll find out soon. Hopefully not very long. Um, I, I think yeah, we'll man. probably hear something in August. Uh, and if we You're don't, right. then... if, 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 yeah, if August goes by and I don't hear anything, I think I'm going to start panicking a little. I, I I'm going to start feeling a little scared. All right. Uh, the only other story I really wanted to touch on from the week is that um, Ubisoft said it's next gen games will be $60 this holiday. So PS5 and Xbox Series X versions of Assassin's Creed Valhalla or whatever else they're going to come out and they're not going to be $70. And the reason that is uh, w- worth pointing out is because uh, 2K games and take two, it's its parent company um, raised the price of NBA 2K 21 on Xbox series X and Play- PlayStation five from 60 to $70. So, and you can't like buy the $60 version on one system and then get the next gen upgraded version at like, you know, at, at, you know, for free as part of like smart delivery, they are opting out so that they can specifically charge more. Um, and this brought a lot of people, uh, this, you know, caused a lot of people to begin, uh, expecting more publishers to go this way. Ubisoft, that it says it's not, but really they just said they're not this holiday. Uh, Yves Gamalt on a uh, conference call was asked explicitly about what about games beyond 2020. And he just reiter- reiterated, uh, when we're talking about that $60 price, we're, we're talking about the holiday games and then kind of left it there. So to me, that sounds like they are still considering it, uh, still could raise the price, but, um, I might be waiting to wait and see how, right. how NBA and if anybody else does it, how those do. Yeah. I think that that might be exactly the case. I, I, uh, you know, they might also miss their window too. Cause I just like the, the, when you release a game this year, you're not going to have much competition in terms of like movies and other forms of entertainment, at least in the United States. And so people might be more willing to spend more money on a game this year. And then by next year, hopefully things will be a little bit better, uh, a little bit more back to normal. And then, in, you know, fall 2021, uh, people will, have, will be spending their money on movies again and it might be a little bit more difficult to do that same sort of strategy so we'll, we'll see um okay uh, i think that does it for the news mike did anything else happen i know you you kind of came back and got into the swing of things this week but i don't remember any other big stories worth talking about no i revealed my hearthstone card so that was fun and people should check that out and see that on gamespeed.com um there you go look look at the spider eggs yeah look at look at the spider eggs everyone always loves to look at the spider eggs um it sounds dirty now that you say it, it sounds it. horrifying yes that's why yes Bro. that's exactly what i'm commenting i, I meant on it there. sounded sexual but uh Oh no! Move on now. No, it does not at all. Um. All right. So. Oh god. All right. Sorry about not that, Dean. Um. Mike. I'm not forgiven. Mike, we uh we're, we're holding back on publishing this episode until Friday morning, specifically, so you could talk about a video game. Which video game? Tell me about it. Is it radical? Uh, it's uh. It's it's it's. it's yes, it's radical. I was trying to think of something funny there. Yeah, it's Crash Bandicoot Four. It uh, they kind of had a fun preview event for that where they sent out like uh download codes for for some people so i had like a temporary download uh version of the game demo and i was able to play that it had three levels it gave me a pretty good glimpse at it and uh had a good time with it uh kind of the standout things about it is that i mean it's very much kind of like you're you're you were playing the insane trilogy right and then you like unlock the fourth game and it kind of does feel like that but it, the art style is a little bit different I think it's a bit more cartoony, a little bit less like I think like the the insane trilogy, not realistic, but a 
but a bit more, I don't know, high fidelity. I don't know what the word would be, but this is a bit more bright, colorful, less textured, I, I suppose, made of way say it. And I, and I like the way it looks quite a lot. The colors really pop. Animations for the, for the characters and the enemies are, are really, really good. Uh, the other kind of neat thing here is just the difficulty levels that they show. There's a retro mode, which is the very typical... You, you run around, you have so many lives. If you die, you go back to like at the checkpoint, but if you run out of lives, you have to restart the whole level. Mm-hmm. Then there's just a modern mode where there's there's no lives. You just, every time you die, you go back to the last checkpoint. So it's, it makes it more like something like a Mario Odyssey or a lot of really 3D platformers these days, right? That don't have game overs anymore. Right. Game over is, is not too interesting. And also, I think that would be like the way to play for a lot of people. Like, it, 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 you know, like I'm, I'm, I'm okay playing older games with game overs. I can find fun and challenge in that but i certainly was like yeah this is way more convenient just so when i die go back to the thing right but uh, uh yeah I, i'm wondering like so it really does just feel like like not just that's dismissive it feels like it is supposed to be crash bandicoot 4 right like it's it, yeah, it is it, just li- li- taking it's taking that mantle and running with it and not trying to be too much more than that well i mean yes uh, in all the kind of best ways possible, right? Like it right. is very much that co- it's a corridor three D platformer that switches between that and like some two D segments. Even, like one of the demos I played was even had like a chase sequence, right? Like in Crash One, it was like a boulder. Sometimes with animals here, you're running away from a dinosaur, and uh, you know, so yeah, it's definitely that same exact style of gameplay, which you know, as Insane Trilogy taught us, is still fun. So the idea of doing a new one of those, yeah, I'm totally down for that. The kind of like the big twists are these sort of new masks that give you like these temporary powers. And it's not like getting a Mario power up where like you, you get it and now you have it for the level. The game's very like adamant, like starting here, you will have this power. And then like at this point, you won't have it anymore so that it can kind of design these sequences around it. So like one of them slows down time for, for, for a little bit. So you come across like special crates that just last for like a little bit. So you have to use this thing to make sure that you can run over those crates or like the uh, nitro crates, normally when you touch those, they explode almost immediately. When you use this thing, the explosion is a lot slower, so you can kind of run across them safely, stuff like that. The the other one is this kind of phase shift uh, mask where, so like there was even like a, a grinding sequence, right? Like I'm grinding on a rail, and by you can see like a outline of objects, or you can see like an like a, an object, and by pushing R two, you kind of switch which like layer is phased in or out. So you're kind of grinding along and you see like uh, this thing you're about to bump into. So you push R2 and that disappears. And then you can see like a, a, an invisible crate. You push R2 and now the crate appears. You can collect that crate, stuff like that. Like not, none of that is like super groundbreaking for 3D platformers, but adding it into Crash is like giving it some variety and nice stuff like that. And just like, you know, the levels themselves are, they look really good. I like the theming. Like the one level is a zombie like ice fishing village. And like, yeah, that's stupid. That's perfect. I like that. The other one's just like, you know, kind of this prehistoric thing. It's great. Like that, I talked about that dinosaur you're chased by. He looks really good. He's uh, he's not just like, you know, kind of like running at you. He's emoting. He's like kind of tripping over things in the level and like making these jumps. Uh, just looks really, really great. Really looks like a cartoon in action. Is that um, is that kind of where Crash should be? Where it's like uh, giving you a lot of different environments to sort of run through and. And a few uh, really nice, um, uh, well thought out sections where you're doing something different to sort of break up the flow of one level. Because like a Mario game, like you, you, they come up with an idea and then they'll do a couple levels that like play on that idea and amplify it, and then they'll leave it behind and do another idea and do the same kind of do that same thing. Uh, but it sounds here like this is very much just about running down a, a corridor as Crash and with with like a, a lot of interesting diversions along the way. Yeah, and I mean, it's hard, to, it's hard to get a full picture there. What I can say is that, so like Crash 1 was very, you know, you did this level, then you did that level, then that level. Crash 2 and 3 was a bit more open-ended in terms of like, you're kind of in like a hub area, you could pick which order to do some levels in. This one's going back more into like a linear level select, and they said specifically because they want to be more deliberate about teaching player mechanics that, oh, you know, okay. at, at certain times, stuff like that, which, which so, so that kind of is the idea there like it, it is more important to introduce mechanics and kind of play off of them as opposed to everything being sort of like it's like a very isolated level that right. you can just do whenever plus and there's this uh so and then there's there are these levels where you kind of go back and play a level as like a different character so in the demo if you play as a neocortex 
and it, it was like a different version of one of the other levels on the demo that ice that zombie fishing village and as cortex has completely different moves he can do like an air dash he has like a like a ray gun kind of like remote control that if it hits an enemy it turns them into a platform if you hit him again it turns them into a bouncy platform and that's how he navigates so like there's that very different play style there and like there, there's some way like when you're doing that like so time is a big thing in this game right like time travel like you play as neocortex and you you see him like 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 igniting a a wrecked pirate ship so that it explodes with dynamite right and when you play at level as crash you see the pirate ship explode and stuff like that and hmm. in some in some way it like it, it can it changes things or i don't know it changes the story or the way you go through levels but there's there's some consequence there of some kind i think it might even just be like that's you know the way you're seeing the quote unquote harder version of the level for collecting things like those diamonds and gems and whatnot that that sounds really cool because that's like the kind mm-hmm. of thing where um those levels are so, sort of they're you know not on rails but they're in that container that you're supposed to run down and because you are running down like you could affect things and then uh, force players into a situation where they have to see the results of that unlike a more open 3d world that 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 makes a lot of sense that's a really good idea okay. that sounds like, exciting uh, yeah like in that dinosaur level like the first time the dinosaur is stopped is just because i run like past some like some kind of like arch and a bunch of boulders crash and crash behind me and they crash even kind of like looks behind him and goes eh, i don't know what that was and hmm. you know the toys for bot basically said like yeah that's another timeline thing like if you play this level in the timeline mode you'll see why those boulders fell the way they did and stuff like that's that, that sounds very cute. cool that's the kind of thing i'm like okay that, that's a really good idea um cool yeah uh you played it on playstation right did you get a you know, yeah you playstation felt, 4 pro it felt uh, right it, it looked it, it was i Pretty sure I was running at 60 frames per second, which I'm not even, I'm not sure if, uh, if the insane trilogy even ran at 60 frames per second on PlayStation 4 Pro, to be honest. I'm not yeah, sure, I wonder. but, uh, I, I think it didn't. Don't, don't quote me on that. But this looked really smooth. Looks great. Uh, and the difficulty seemed right. Like it, it was hard. It wasn't like, if you ask people to say Crash 1 was maybe too hard, mm-hmm. this feels like pretty good in that Crash 2, Crash 3 difficulty area where it's wonderful. Should be. Awesome. Cool. Uh, that game uh, has a date, right? It's coming out in October? October. I'll find out. Yeah, I'm, yeah uh... I mean, I was excited for this game, and uh, after playing it, I feel justified. This is Good. probably one of my more anticipated games. October 2nd. I think this yeah. is, um, I think it's exact, excuse me, I think it's exactly the kind of game that um, I'll, I'll be thinking more about this holiday than the launch games, is like uh, stuff like Crash, stuff like Cyberpunk, stuff that's like um that is, isn't necessarily relying on new new hardware and uh i think that's one right. of the reasons where i'm like well, ah, th- those showcases are fine i have other games to look forward to well and that's one of the weird things is that they are they were still very quiet about this game on next gen platforms right they hmm. did not say anything about they even asked right. they did not say anything about PlayStation five or series x but you have to imagine right right and it's like you know they, they i think they do that because they don't want people to worry about um Oh, holding off. I'll just hold off and I'll get the next gen version because that'll be the real version. They don't want people to, to feel that way. And I, I feel like more than ever, people really shouldn't feel that way. If you want to get a game and you have current gen hardware, just get it. It seems like most stuff's going to get upgraded in one way, one way or another. So, so yeah, um, I'll definitely be playing this Crash game. Um, yeah. I, and also, I, I'm looking it up. I'm, I'm pretty sure, yeah, Insane Trilogy is 30 frames per second. I think the, the original games on original PlayStation probably ran at 60, right? Probably. probably. Because the, the I mean, PlayStation was so fast, day. yeah. yeah uh, okay. Well, uh, th- that's cool. I um, I see you also. You've also still been playing CrossCode. I, I started playing that. Um, I, I let me you ask you. Hated it. I don't hate it. I really <laughs> like the way it feels and plays. I just uh, the story was a lot at the very beginning, and I was just not into it. And so it was like that hurdle to get over in, in games for me sometimes. Where I'm like, I know there's a, probably a lot of really good stuff here. I just got to get past this early, early, you know, banter or whatever. So um, I, I guess I asked people like, should I care about the story? I, I didn't get very many good answers. Um, so I, I'll go back to it. I'm, I tried it on PC. I think uh, I'm, I'm like hesitant to play more. Cause I'm like, if I'm really going to play it, I'm going to play it on switch and I don't want to do all this stuff yeah. over again. So, uh, but yeah, you're still playing it. You're still digging it. Yeah, one thing I'll say to you is that it's a lot heavier on the story in the beginning. That's kind of uh, the sense I got. So that's what, I'm yeah. glad to hear that. Yeah, right. Like once you get into like what, like the first town, even and after that, once you get to kind of to the quote unquote like overworld, right? Okay, the story it's still there, but it's not quite as much. And then 
it, where the game really shines. That's why I want to talk about because I, I finally got into like the dungeons. So I've done the first two dungeons, and those are really cool. They're very puzzle focused. Uh, and I, I may have even talked about this yet, but that's where like you really get the Zelda vibe, and that's where the game is the most fun. Is you're running through these dungeons and you're doing all these puzzles. The only yeah. thing that's weird about it is that they, the dungeons are long. They're like three, four times as long as a Zelda dungeon, and like. Huh. I was to the point where I don't like how long they are because, like, when I play a Zelda game, like, I'm if, if I'm at the dungeon, when I get to a dungeon, I'm always like very conscious of like, okay, I'm either going to like play all this dungeon now or I'm going to stop here because, like, right. I don't want to stop in the middle of a dungeon. You kind of have to keep everything in your head so you can't right. like break it up into 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 chunks. Yeah, I agree. Right. So that's like like I even almost quit cross code because like I did have to stop in the middle of a dungeon and I came back and I was just like so like right kind of just days like where hmm. uh do i even then like i i got into it I'm like yeah this is really fun what am i talking about i'm, I'm i I'm, i i remember where i am it, and they they do like have points in the dungeon especially halfway where they basically are like hey look you can stop here for now if you want to it's like we're basically almost like two dungeons pushed together like the second part okay. you don't have to like travel back to anything you did in that first part probably or something like that so so that's but even still it's like man i've been doing this dungeon for a while i almost i kind of wish they were more like like you know eight zelda side dungeons so these four at least four i know of really big ones i know i mean i could feel that yeah Yeah, Yeah, and that's part of the the progression of those games where like you get past the dungeon you're like i have moved forward so you you kind of want to maintain that momentum so I, i get what you mean uh i'm i I liked what I played of it. It seems good, so it's like I could tell, like, oh, okay, this is like a uh, an interesting spin on the Zelda ideas. So uh, I'll give it more of a chance. Um, you're playing on uh, PC. Can you like just literally aim with your mouse? For, I like, I played with the controller at first, so I didn't even try with the mouse yet. But I bet you can. You should be able to. Uh, that's usually how those probably, that probably feel games. pretty nice. Yeah, I'll give that a shot. Um, I, I haven't been, I haven't been playing much. Been pretty busy. The games I have been playing. One of them is I can't talk about yet. It's it's Flight Simulator. Uh, I'll be able to talk about that soon. Um, but but yeah, I I guess I could say that I'm using a flight stick in a game, and Ooh. it that works really well. And it you know um those kinds of simulator games uh really are about um yokes like the full like steering wheel style controller. But I'm using like a Hotas, which is like a stick instead of a, a wheel and it's um it, it I, I was wor- i was worried about that and it turned it's fine it works just fine and and really if you have a hotas uh it's better to use that than saying use that it. word no it's what that's the word hands on throttle and stick hotas oh, God. welcome oh, God. to the simulator corner mike Ugh. you're here forever i'm never gonna let you leave um yes so i if you have a hotas you definitely should use that instead of like uh the keyboard or even like a controller the controller is fine uh but like you'll want those extra buttons that the the game kind of maps to it automatically i think i could probably say this stuff i think they've talked about that um it maps it maps automatically and it just worked and it was yeah it was uh, definitely the best way to play so uh in the one i have is like 80 bucks uh, i'm sure it's cheaper on sale a lot of times it's the thrustmaster hotas x1 or something like that uh so uh, if you're in the market before this game comes out it might be a good idea to go pick up something like that um, and then I, I've been playing Trivia Royale, which is just like a Battle Royale trivia game. I don't know if I talked about this at all. I might have. Um, I mean, I've and, seen you talk about it on Twitter. But yeah. Like... Yeah. And it's a, it basically it's um, it is exactly what I said. Like you uh, uh, there's a general sort of like Battle Royale game where like you actually are in, like trying to be the last person standing. And that's with a thousand people. And you go head to head with one other person on in each round. So you have to like, you know, it's 1,024 and then 512 people or something like that. And then it gets down to 256. Uh, and and and, uh, and you're just you know, trying to survive these things. And I, I've won one game of that general battle royale. And that was that was a lot of fun. It felt very good to do that. Uh, but then there's also topics you can go into. And you can go into topics like video games and uh, just face against someone else. And, and each round is like five questions head to head with someone else. And the, the, the topics break it down to where it's not, you're not going through the whole battle royale. You're just facing one other person. In, in this five question round um and i it's it's i'm surprised like i know i like, i do this job right so i'm gonna know a lot about video games I, this makes me feel like i am one of the most knowledgeable people about video games on the face of the planet because like I need to try this now yeah you should try it um i need it, to beat it, you specifically yeah it's it's fun like they do uh they do ranks by like uh, your city your state 
uh, country in the world. And uh, I had the most wins in Colorado. And it was f- fun to like go after that, like sort of like small little goal, which was like, it was like 80 something. I think when I first got it, it was like 65. So it was like, yeah, I was playing a lot. But um, the rounds are r- really short. And it's it's very well done where it's like the yeah you know, some of the questions might be really obvious but you get more points if you answer quickly so you're trying to be very fast and that's where some of the mistakes can come in um and you know with most of the rounds like i i'm either getting um i'm getting like close to a perfect score or or, or you're missing like one question that i just i never do before uh but most of them most of the time i am coming out a winner and that feels pretty good so yeah definitely give it a shot winner. I, it's it's a it's it's fun. I, I feel like they should maybe have like a um like a, a, a video games advanced sort of thing where like they Ooh. try to make it more more difficult and try to add questions That's in there. Called trivia Royale. Yeah, Trivia Royale. Um, but yeah, it's I, I recommend it. It's a good experience. It's fun. It's it's been a good distraction. It was uh, something where like after I beat Paper Mario, I just wanted to like um zone X zone X. I didn't have a lot of time and I was working on a lot of other stuff, I, so I I've been playing a lot I of this. I can't get myself. I can't get myself to download Paper Mario. I feel yeah, bad. I've tried to psych myself at. up. I, well, I mean, I got I got discouraged because like I was I was looking at some retrospectives of like Mario and Luigi games and the older Paper Mario games. And I just saw like every character was like this unique like yeah. creative character, and I, I I know it's like almost silly. Like I can't get over it. Then I just look and I just see I see Goombas. Yeah, I see Toads. I see Bombs. It's just like man, this is just it, it's almost kind of like. How like the new Super Mario games turn me off in a way. It's weird how much I like Mario. Sometimes like the actual like what they think of as like the most basic Mario aesthetic. Yeah, the canon Mario it's, stuff. Yeah, right. It's like not really like my I think like I like my favorite Mario games are like the ones that have really weird settings, like like Odyssey or the Galaxy games or even Sunshine. Right. Like I like how Sunshine is really weird and different. And I don't know. I don't know. I just I, I just can't bring myself to pull the trigger. I don't blame you. I mean, I feel like um. You know, I didn't play Color Splash for for similar reasons, and I, some people defend that game. So I'm like, I should probably actually give it a try. Um, go back and actually play that game now, since I since I did like this one. Uh, but then again, I I just played this one, so I don't need to do that anytime soon. But I I I, I get your feeling there. Um, I, it also makes me worry a little bit. Like I hope like because we we talked about how like that was like a rule now in a Nintendo. You can't make yeah. like off off art characters anymore. They have to like fit. They have to just be a regular Bob-omb can't be a you know a ship captain or whatever um and that's um it's a weird rule rule and like when i go forward like when we're like if we're leaving new super mario brothers behind i want like them to get weird with their future platforming games so uh so that makes me worry i got a kid yelling at me i I don't have anything else to talk about. You want to wrap this yeah, up? Yeah, we, we can get out of here if your kids. Let's get yeah, out of here. So I'm, I'm going on vacation too. So uh, I think we'll come back oh, and do an episode are? next week. Yeah. So yeah, it's starting okay. tomorrow, Friday. All right. Uh-huh. Um, we're gonna uh, let's uh, yeah. So you tell people where they can find you on the internet. Twitter, Tolkoto at uh, 90sDisney.com. And I am Jeff Grubb on Twitter, and uh, you got How Games Make Money. You can find uh, look look up that other podcast. She's trying to tell you about it right now. She wants you guys to check it out as well. All right, uh, that's gonna do it for us. Thank you for listening. Thank you for watching. Uh, we'll be back with another new episode next week. Until then, have a good one. Take care of yourself, and, and goodbye. Bye.